Pinocchio's Promise, a Walt Disney beginning reader. One day, Geppetto the woodcarver finished making a cuckoo clock. He held it up proudly. Pinocchio, Jiminy, come see this beautiful clock. I made it for Mrs. Romano. It looks okay, said Pinocchio. My poor boy, you are so bored while I work, said Geppetto, but now I have some work for you. Take this clock to Mrs. Romano and then come home as fast as you can. Promise? I promise, said Pinocchio, and he took the clock and skipped away. Pinocchio did not see Gideon and Foulfellow, but they saw him and the clock. That is one beautiful clock, said Gideon. It must be worth a lot of money, said Foulfellow. How can we get our hands on it? Pinocchio stopped to read a circus poster. I wish I could see the circus, he said aloud. My, my, said Foulfellow softly. Look what we have here. He picked up two old circus tickets from the street. Let's see if Pinocchio will fall for a little trick. Pinocchio, dear boy, said Foulfellow. I have two tickets for the circus, but I cannot go. Would you like to go instead? Oh, yes, thank you, said Pinocchio. Pinocchio, called Jiminy Cricket. What about your promise to Geppetto? Pinocchio sighed. Sorry, I cannot go, he said. I have to take this clock to Mrs. Romano. Oh, I will do that, said Foulfellow grandly. Here are the tickets. Now you enjoy the circus. And with that, Foulfellow grabbed the clock, and Gideon pulled Pinocchio off to the circus. When Pinocchio got to the circus, he did not see Gideon leave him and hide. Pinocchio, Pinocchio handed his ticket to the ticket man. Why, this is an old ticket! You think me? You think you can fool me? asked the angry ticket man. And in shame, Pinocchio ran through the circus. He just wanted to get away from the ticket man. Pinocchio ran and ran, and very soon he was lost, and now Jiminy Cricket was nowhere to be found. Pinocchio stopped to catch his breath. Whoosh! Suddenly he was covered with water, and two huge elephants wanted to play. Pinocchio ran away, dripping wet. Next he ran into three happy clowns. Let's have some fun, shouted the clowns, and they picked up Pinocchio and threw him up high. Help, shouted Pinocchio. Just then, a clown threw him way up and Pinocchio flew through the air. Oof, said Pinocchio. He had landed on the back of a beautiful white horse. Stay and ride with me, said the girl on the horse's back. No, thank you, said Pinocchio. I must find Jiminy Cricket. So he jumped off the horse and landed with a thump onto the ground. Then along came the circus strongman. And what have we got here, he laughed. Please put me down, cried Pinocchio. Okay, said the strong man with a hearty laugh, and then he dropped Pinocchio in a pile of hay. Pinocchio wondered where to go now. He just had to find Jiminy. Suddenly a lion tamer came running out of a nearby tent. Pinocchio heard screams coming from inside. He crept up to the tent. What is going on in here, he wondered. Pinocchio crawled all the way into the tent. Suddenly he heard the roar of a lion and a crowd. He was in the middle of a circus ring, and bright lights made Pinocchio blink. He did not see the lion ready to spring. The lion jumped, and it caught Pinocchio in his huge paw. He opened his mouth, and Pinocchio saw the lion's big white teeth. The lion sniffed at Pinocchio. Hmm, he thought. It looks like a little boy, but it smells like wood. Why, it, it smells just like the old wooden ball I used to play with. The lion began to purr. He rolled over on his back. He held Pinocchio up in the air. Then he turned over onto his stomach and fell asleep. The people could not believe their eyes. Very, very carefully, the ringmaster crept up to the lion. Very, very carefully, he put a collar around the lion's neck. Then he pulled gently on the collar and the lion got up. He followed the ringmaster like a big kitten. Pinocchio stood up and brushed himself off and the crowd cheered. Pinocchio did not know what to do next. He jumped up and ran out of the ring. Jiminy Cricket ran after him. Pinocchio, where have you been? I've been looking for you everywhere. Just then, Pinocchio ran right into the ringmaster. How did you get in that tent? The ringmaster asked. You could have been hurt. What if that lion had bitten you? Pinocchio felt ashamed. He knew that he was just a bad boy. He had gotten into the circus without a ticket, and he was not even supposed to be at the circus at all. Pinocchio turned and ran far away. 
Jiminy Cricket ran after him. Pinocchio, he called, wait for me. Don't keep running away. Remember your promise to Geppetto. All oh, the clock, gasped Pinocchio. Yes, we must get the clock back from Foulfellow before something terrible happens to it, cried Jiminy. Pinocchio and Jiminy hurried back to town. Smack! Pinocchio ran right into a policeman. What is your hurry, young man? asked the policeman. And Pinocchio told the policeman about Foulfellow and the clock. Well, I'll bet that rascal Foulfellow was trying to sell it, said the policeman. Let's get him! The policeman blew his whistle. He waved his stick. Pinocchio and Jiminy Cricket followed close behind. There he is, shouted the policeman. Foulfellow was just about to sell the clock. Then he saw the policeman and Pinocchio running towards him. He threw the clock up in the air and ran. The policeman chased him. He was still shouting and waving his stick. Pinocchio jumped and reached for the clock and caught it just in time. Phew, that was close, he sighed. Let's take the clock to Mrs. Romano right now. Mrs. Romano was very happy to see Pinocchio and her new clock, and Pinocchio was very happy to give it to her at last. When Pinocchio got back, he found Geppetto waiting in their little house. Pinocchio, where have you been? I was going to take you and Jiminy to the circus today. Now it is too late, said Geppetto. We stopped to learn a lesson along the way, said Jiminy Cricket. Next time we will stick to our promises, won't we, Pinocchio? Pinocchio nodded his head. Next time, I'll keep my promise. I promise. The end.